My alarm goes off. It's 7 a.m. I turn off my alarm and head to the bathroom. I take a hot shower to wake me up for the morning. I come out, get dressed, do my hair, grab my bag, and walk out the door. I'm ready for the day until I remember I didn't grab my coffee before leaving my apartment this morning. There's a Starbucks on every block in the city, so I stop at the nearest one on my way to work. I order my usual, one venti pink drink and a bagel. I walk in and catch the elevator up to the 52nd floor. I say good morning to my assistant and make my way down the hall. I open up the glass door to my office overlooking New York City. The door finally closes behind me and the words read, Jocelyn Savage, senior editor of the New York Times. I love when people ask me what I want to be when I grow up because it reminds me of this ever so constant dream of mine. With every waking moment, I think about how I can come closer to my dream of being a journalist and writer. If you had come to me six years ago and told me that I'd be an aspiring writer, I would probably would have looked at you like you were crazy, but somehow that became my reality. I never thought writing was something I would get myself into. I wrote when I was required to, and outside of those prompted times, writing wasn't something I did. But fourth grade was the year something was revealed to me. I actually really enjoyed writing. Loved it, actually, and was pretty good at it for being a nine-year-old. Reading was always something I found quite enjoyable, and I still do to this day. My friends always make fun of me because for Christmas or birthdays, I ask for books. Yes, books. You're probably looking at me like I'm crazy or an introvert, but if you know me at all, you know I'm the complete and total opposite. I'm just someone who appreciates a good read every once in a while, and this habit of reading pretty regularly helped me develop my writing skills from a young age. I continue to read and write, and I have been doing so ever since then. Writing transforms my mind into a landscape of imagination, ingenuity, and freedom. I'm in control. I control the good, the bad, and the in-between. It's a safe space where anything I want can happen. My insecurities fade, and I suddenly feel this rush of confidence, capability, and intellect that makes the experience of writing that much more impactful. In more recent times, I've been thinking about what I want to pursue professionally and came to the conclusion that I want to pursue journalism. When I first told my mom I wanted to be a journalist, she asked what kind. I initially said political, but recently curved my interest to investigative journalism. When I told my mom about my change in focus, she was a little concerned. And when I say a little concerned, I mean a lot concerned. Investigative journalists are responsible for uncovering the truth about corrupt people and organizations. This is especially dangerous for one reason. Not everyone wants to be exposed for their wrongdoings. Along with investigative journalism being very dangerous, being any kind of journalist nowadays can be just as risky. In June of 2019, five people were killed while working at the Capitol Gazette newsroom in Annapolis. As of this year, 10 journalists have been physically harmed. On a more specific occasion, one reporter was punched in the face and had her phone stolen while interviewing voters in California. During the recent George Floyd protests, several reporters have been physically injured with cuts or bruises or tear gassed. We were with a group of media and thought we were in a safe spot. We kept saying we're media. Police tear gassed and pepper sprayed the entire group, posted KSTP eyewitness news journalist Ryan Raish on Twitter. On numerous occasions during the George Floyd protests, Journalists have been harmed for no reason other than for reporting the happenings at the time. I see all of this and it scares me half to death, but it doesn't scare me enough that I would stop pursuing my interest and passion. Despite all of this violence and hatred for journalists, I plan to use my experience to make change in the world. I'm sure some of you watch or listen to news stations like MSNBC or Fox News. You see these people on your screens or hear them through your devices. But you might not realize what makes this process a success. Here, I'll give you an example. Think of an operating room. In an OR, you have a lead surgeon, an assist, an anesthesiologist, a certified registered nurse, an OR nurse, a surgical technician, a resident, a physician's assistant, and a medical device company representative. Yes, all of these people bunched up in a room have differing jobs of differing importance, if you will, but they all work together in a conglomerate effort to achieve a common goal, saving a life. The key word here is conglomerate. According to Google, a conglomerate is a number of different things or parts that are put or grouped together to form a whole but remain distinct entities. This word is the embodiment of how organizations and businesses are made. 
different people coming together to complete the same task and accomplish the same goals. You may be asking how this relates back to me wanting to use my seemingly small ability to make such large contributions, but this picture I'm trying to create is bigger than me. In every aspect of life, an underdog is always needed, whether it be a writer for a small column in a paper or a janitor at a school. These little intricacies make a difference in the larger scheme of things. Think of them as support beams on a house. If you take them away, the house collapses. I say this all to say that you as an individual have to look inside yourself and find that one thing that you enjoy, no matter how small it is, and use your love and passion to contribute and make a difference. Despite how small your passion, talent, or dream seems, you are and can be one of the pieces of the puzzle to make envision change a reality.